Good afternoon, brethren. This is Big Judah coming to you guys from California. Before I begin, I want to give all praises to the Most High, Yahweh. I also want to give acknowledgement to the Earthly Mother, who is Wisdom, who is the Holy Spirit. I also acknowledge Yahweh Shai. I pray that the Most High blesses this lesson today and gives us a lot more understanding of things that have happened in the past, things that are happening right now and uh, currently, things that are happening soon to come on this earth. I've been uh, watching a lot of videos and looking at a lot of the things that are happening, you know, all over the world right now. And a pretty big event is coming up next uh, weekend, I'm talking about the super blood moon. And I wanted to make a video connecting a lot of the things I've been studying that the Most High has been showing me. And I think that um, I want to share something new that I have been blessed with and getting more understanding about the order that the um, punishment is going to uh, fall on the earth. And this is a kind of a new concept that the Most High has been enlightening me to for the last uh, <clears throat> couple weeks. And I've been kind of studying it out before I brought it out, you know, to the subscribers, to the other Hebrews. And um, I wanted to show you guys this video because, <clears throat> you know, the guy gives good information about the significance of this blood moon. But, of course, he goes off when he tries to uh, equate, you know, the super blood moon to the Jewish people that are over there and, um, you know, in the Middle East right now. It's, it's amazing when you sit there and listen to what he's saying because it fits our people and our plight perfectly. But then he tries to tw switch it up and, and start to apply the, this um, these coming curses, this coming switch to the Jewish nation. <clears throat> and you know, if it doesn't fit, you know, it, it's not it's not going to fit these people. It fits our people to the T. You know, this video is on some. It's like on biblical coding. And like I said, the guy's the, uh, he was discussing the significance of the upcoming blood moon, signaling a shift from the Gentiles back to the Hebrews. And like I said, the guy does a pretty decent job talking about the sign, then like normal goes off about the fake Jews. But before I read this, we know that this is the shift that was to come at the end, away from the Gentiles, one from away from Esau and the Gentiles, back to the Hebrews. And that's discussed here in 2nd Ezra, chapter 6, verse 9. For Esau is the end of the world, and Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth. So at the end of this age, Esau would be running everything. He'd be running the world, and currently running the world into the ground. You know, but Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth. And Jacob is us the Hebrews who have been awakened here at the end, the ones that are now proclaiming the truth, proclaiming the truth of who we are and proclaiming the, uh, proclaiming the truth of where our inheritance is and also proclaiming the truth on where judgment is about to begin. The Most High is making it very plain, you know, in the moon and the stars and the sky, where judgment is going to fall and where it's going to begin. And where the blessing for our people is going to begin again as well. So I'm going to let this guy go ahead. And we're going to listen to the first five minutes or so. I'm going to stop a little bit. Because he's made some very good points. And then we're kind of going to go into some uh, some different books. To kind of get some deeper understanding. And get some more clarification as to what's about to come on the earth. Here we go.
Good day ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to my channel. It is January 10th, 2019. And there's going to be a super blood moon total lunar eclipse January 21st, 2019. I'll leave the link to this webpage. This is no ordinary blood moon, ladies and gentlemen. This is... Now right here is showing where the uh, blood moon is going to be seen. And as you can see, it's all over our hair, the Americas which is where we have been um, going through hell during these last 400 years, you know? And it's amazing because these eclipses um, have made the X over the United States. And we got these blood moons that have been showing up and pretty much highlighting the lands of our captivity. Let's continue. It's over the entire Western Hemisphere over both North and South America. And we're going to be looking at Micah chapter 4 to chapter 7 in the Bible Codes. The access term for this Bible Code is Blood Moon. Yod, Rash, Het, Dalet, Mem. The word Blood Moon at the Yod is also attached to Yod, He, Wav, Dalet, He. That would be Yehuda. And it's also attached to bet rash yo tau that means brit or covenant so the word blood moon appears between chapter four and chapter seven of micah at a page width of 93 and once again ladies and gentlemen i can't just give you the bible code that'll tell you the scripture that's behind it because the context of the scripture goes with the coding that you see behind here now i'm going to read you Micah chapter 4, verse 6 down to 14. Verse 1 to 5, it's talking about the millennial kingdom. But before that, he's going to gather Judah and Ephraim back to Israel. You can see it in the scripture. Uh, Micah chapter 4, verse 6. Okay, the whole, all these signs predominantly are dealing with the gathering of Israel back into the Holy Land. That's where all these signs are pointing to. That's so why you have all these eclipses pointing back to the Holy Land. You got these blood moons showing up over the Holy Land. I know many people don't necessarily agree that the Holy Land is here. They still think it's over there in the Middle East. And like I said, we're going to see soon enough who's correct and who's not. Okay? But all these signs are showing up here. And they're pointing to this land. And the redemption of Judah and Ephraim, the northern kingdom and the southern kingdom being brought back together. And like I said, we're going to get over, we're going to get into that and some other scriptures and some other historical books shortly. But this blood moon is coming up it has a lot of significance. And this guy, he, like I said, he sees the significance of these signs in the sky, but he doesn't equate it to the correct people. Let's continue. In that day, saith you, who I will assemble her that halteth, and I will gather her that is driven out, and her that I have afflicted. I will make her that halteth a remnant, and her that was cast far off a strong nation, and ye, who shall reign over them in Mount Zion from henceforth ever forever. And thou, O tower of the flock, the stronghold of the daughter of Zion, unto thee shall I come, even the first dominion, the kingdom shall come to the daughter of Jerusalem. Now why dost thou not out aloud? Is there no king in thee? Is thy counselor perished? For pangs have taken thee as a woman in travail. That's Revelation chapter 12 verse 2 language, ladies and gentlemen. So is verse 10. Be in pain and labor to bring forth, O daughter of Zion. We are the ones that have been laboring in, in pain this entire time. We're the ones... When you look at the historical facts that have been going through hell, okay, been treated like garbage, still even to this day, looked down upon, not seen for who we really are, still being uh, considered the hidden ones, because the vast majority of the world still is totally oblivious to who we are, or at least they won't admit to who we are. Continue. Like a woman in travail, for now shall thou go forth out of the city, and thou shalt dwell in the field, and thou shalt go 
ever to Babylon, there shall thou be delivered, and he shall redeem thee from the hand of thy enemies. That's what this whole thing about is, ladies and gentlemen, redeeming the daughters of Zion and the daughters of Jerusalem from the enemy who's on American soil. No, so this guy doesn't really know what he's even talking about. Yeah, you know, um, he's right. The enemies that are on American soil, the enemies are still on our land. And this whole thing is about redeeming Israel. It's amazing how the Most High uses these other nations to say things, to say truths, and they don't even realize it because the Most High uses everything for his will. Let's continue. Also, many nations are gathered against thee that say, let her be defiled and let our eye look upon Zion. But they Has that not happened when the other nations came here and defiled our people? Is that not exactly what happened? to the uh, aborigines, the people that were here. They put us in a low state. They gave us these fake religions. And they took away all of our all of our knowledge of who we are. Is that not what happened? They defiled us so that they could look at us and they could mock us and keep us at the bottom. Just remember what he's saying because when you get some of these historical uh, documents and stories, you guys are gonna see how this all fits our people. They know not the thoughts of Yahuwah, neither understand they his counsel, for he shall gather them as the sheaves into the floor. Arise and thresh, O daughter of Zion, for I will make thy horn iron, and I will make thy hooves brass, and thou shalt beat in pieces many people, and I will consecrate their grain unto Yahuwah, and their substance unto out of of the whole earth. Nope. Now you start talking, listening to this part, and it's talking about empowering the Most High's people. And that goes with Jeremiah. Let's get that real quick. Jeremiah 16. Let me go there real quick. 16. And 16. Behold, I will send for many fishers, saith the Most High and they shall fish, uh, fish them. And that's exactly what you're seeing. The Most High awakening his men and them fishing, you know, to bring back the people of the Most High, the men, women, and children of the Most High's chosen seed. That's what's been happening. Now, after that's done, he says, and after will I send for many hunters and they shall hunt them from every mountain and from every hill, and out of the holes of the rocks. So at first, you know, the Mosai's people are are pretty much defiled, destroyed. Then at the end, he wakes them up. He wakes up a, a chosen few. And then after he's done waking them up, he converts them into hunters. And that's what this guy is talking about right here. Let's continue. Here at the top of the table, you will have calf, wav, resh, samak. That would be Cyrus, along with to the daughters of Jerusalem. Right here, you have the sign in between daughters of Jerusalem and daughters of Zion. And then down here, you have his voice. And right here, you have Asaph. Asaph means to gather, but in reverse, it means fingertip. As in Cyrus being his fingertip, Yahuwah's fingertip. Verse 12 here, but they know not the thoughts of Yahuwah, neither understand they his counsel, for he shall gather them as the sheaves into the floor. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, how many of you out there know that this blood moon that's going to happen on January 21st, 2019, is a sign to the remnant of Jacob that there's going to be a shift in world power from America to Israel. That means a lot of wealth is going to be taken from America and given to Israel. As a matter of fact, a lot of nations are going to be doing that, removing their wealth and giving it to Israel, not by choice, but by force. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, have you ever heard of the grass is greener on the other side of the fence syndrome? All right, that's enough of this guy's uh, video right here. I, I was going to go through the whole thing, but... 
that's not what we need to go through right now. Go and go back over here. All right, we'll stick with this right here. Okay, this is signaling a shift, which we know. It, it doesn't take a rocket scientist now to see that the, to the the happy days and the times of this world being on top and running everything are just about at an end. You got the stock market in flux, just waiting to crash. You got the government in shutdown. Every day that it goes longer and longer, you got more people not able to pay their bills, getting closer and closer to people who are dependent upon the government, uh, any kind of government programs, not getting paid. Um, once that begins to happen, everything just starts to just collapse quickly. Okay? The truth is coming out all over the place. I run into people m much more than I used to that are aware that things are not the way that they used to be. You know, they're, they're looking for the truth because many of the things that they were taught, things are panning out that way anymore. You know, the churches are being exposed. You're hearing about, I don't know, this one pastor who bought his wife, a, I don't know, a Lamborghini or some $200,000 car for her birthday. People are losing faith in these religions. They're realizing that they're fake and false. And the Most High is exposing the world and the system for what it is, a fraud. And many more people are being uh, brought or led to search for something more, to search for the truth. And the Most High is moving people together to learn and to grow. Now today we're going to be getting into some more information to understand, to help to explain why, you know, this blood moon is overshadowing the Americas. This guy in the video, you know, he just goes off and trying to make it sound like you know, a lot of these Jewish people are being persecuted over in France, and there's all this anti-Semitism, and, um, you know, and that they're going to be go back to Israel. I mean, you pretty much have to just make up an entire story based on absolutely falsehoods in order to believe that those are the people, because they don't fit the curses. Now, as you can see, this blood moon over, over the Americas is for a reason, because of all the death and murder that has taken place upon our people here in our lands. And it's this, this death and destruction was never paid for. And the Most High said it wouldn't be because he talked about in the book of Enoch, how the 70 shepherds were going to uh, destroy way more than they were allowed to, they were going to, they were called to. And the Most High has been keeping track this entire time. And he told our people, don't tell them anything. Let them do let them do their will. So it's a testimony against them. That's why they've done all these things and they've hidden all this history and acting like no one was ever going to figure it out. But the Most High always had a plan. That's why you've seen all these signs now over the Americas. You saw the eclipse a couple of years ago with the first line to make that X. Now you're seeing these blood moons you know, that are, that are, that are coming and they're just signifying. Like the guy said, he gets all the information right as far as what it's signifying. It's signifying a shift from Esau to Jacob. He's enlightening us as to where our inheritance is. And we're going to be getting over into that even more in the next few videos. But today we're going to get into um, some more information. You know, this is showing you that our people were killed and destroyed here in these areas for the most part. And that we got to have that numbers 35 and 33. The Most High says how he has to cleanse the land. Because our land has never been cleansed. And he's the one that's, um, Most High is the one that's letting everyone know. That's what's, that's what's up next. Let's read that real quick. Numbers 35 and 33. So ye shall not pollute the land wherein ye are, for blood it defileth the land. And the land cannot be cleansed of the blood that is shed therein, but by the blood of him that shed it. The Most High with this blood moon is letting everyone know that our land has been defiled with our blood. And he plans on using that numbers 35 and 33 to cleanse the land. Who's been killed 
and exploited in these lands where this blood moon is going to shine. Who is the one that had their land stolen from them? Women raped, children raped, sold into slavery. Did that happen to the Jewish people in this area? We all know the answer to that. That happened to our people. The chosen, the chosen seed. And no one's ever paid for that. And the Most High is now put in the stars. The payment is due. Now I'm going to read a little something here. It's an account from, again, Bartolome de las Casas. A short account of the destruction of the Indies. Right here in the middle. We're going to take a look right over here in the middle of an account that happened right there. Like I said, these, these accounts have been hidden because they didn't want anyone to figure out, you know, the horrible atrocities that were committed on the people here. So I'm going to read what happened in New Spain when um, the Europeans got here and some of the atrocities that uh, were carried out on our people. Here we go. New Spain was discovered in 1517. And at, that, and at the time, great atrocities were committed against the indigenous people of the region. And some were killed by members of the expedition in 1518. The so-called Christians set about stealing from the people and murdering them on the pretense of settling the area. And from that year until this, and it is now 1542, the great iniquities and injustices and outrageous acts of violence and the bloody tyranny of these Christians have steadily escalated. The perpetrators having lost all fear of, the, of God, all love of their sovereign, and all sense of self-respect. The heinous outrages and acts of barbarity have been so vile, the violence so intense, the murders so frequent, other acts of despotism so extreme, and the havoc of devastation so widespread throughout the kingdoms of the mainland. Hold on. That what we have so far set down in this account is as nothing compared with what went on in New Spain and the scale and nature of the atrocities committed without a break from 1518 right up to this day, Bigar's description. Even now in September, 1542, the atrocities get worse day um, by the day. It being the case, as we have said, that the infernal brutality and utter inhumanity of the acts committed have steadily increased as time has gone on. From the very first day they set foot in New Spain, which was the 18th of April, 1518, until 1530, <clears throat> there was no respite. Whatever in the carnage and mayhem provoked by these cruel and bloodthirsty Spaniards. Throughout those 12 long years, they pillaged their way over an area of some 450 leagues around Mexico City, putting those who lived there to the sword and committing all manner of barbarities against them. This area had originally boasted four or five great kingdoms, each of them as large as Spain and a good deal better favored, and each of them inhabited as the Almighty had ordained, by more people than the combined population of Toledo, Seville, Villa, I want to say Villa Dolid, Saragossa, and Barcelona. Even when these Spanish cities were at their very height of their fortunes, the whole area veritably teemed with humanity. Even though if one were to walk its frontier, one would travel over 1,800 leagues. Yet over the 12 years of which we are speaking and during the course of what they term the conquest, which is really and truly nothing other than a series of violent incursions into the territory by these cruel tyrants, incursions condemned not only in the eyes of God, but also by law and in practice far worse than the assaults mounted by the Turk in his attempt to destroy Christendom. The Europeans have, throughout these 450 leagues, butchered, burned alive, or otherwise done to death, four million souls, 
young and old alike, men, women, and children. And this figure does not include those killed and still being killed today. Atmosphere ...over both North and South America. And we're going to be looking at mica, ordinary blood. <laughs> okay. Let's go back over that real quick. I guess they don't want you to hear that part. Um, butchered, burned alive, or otherwise done to death. Four million souls, young and old alike, men, women, and children. And this figure does not include those killed and still being killed today as a direct result of the tyrannical slavery and the oppression and privation its victims are forced to endure on a daily basis. And no account, no matter how lengthy, how long it took to write, nor how conscientiously it was compiled, could possibly do justice to the full horror of the atrocities committed at one time or another in various parts of this region by these mortal enemies of the human race. Even if one were simply to select one or two outrages from among the many, it would still be nigh on impossible to describe them in all their bloody and terrible detail. That said, and even though I am well aware that I can hardly recount one atrocity in a thousand, I will endeavor to say something about a few of these incidents. So this is just the pretty much the tip of the iceberg when he just started talking about the four million people that were killed in a 12 year period. In this one little small area, that's not even counting all the stuff that was going on in all these different areas, all the death, all the destruction, all the barbarism, all the murder. And it was never paid for. Only thing was that happened was all the history was just swept under the rug. But the Most High said, you know, that he was going to be the judge. And he is going to be the judge. And there's no getting around, getting away from it. So now it kind of makes more sense as to why you're starting to see the blood moons over this land. And so it's starting to make more sense when you read Numbers 35 and 33 about how to cleanse the land. Because that's what the Most High is going to do. He talks about that. We were first scattered in Ham's and Shem's land after the flood. Okay? That's where after the flood, and we were scattered over in Shem's land and Ham's land. That's why when Abraham was, uh, you know, when you read like the other stories of Abraham, he was over there living with Ham. Okay? And then he was taken away to another area. He was guided to go to a different area, okay? But eventually the Most High moved another group of our people over here into what is now called the Americas, okay? And we were destroyed and scattered from this land over here last. We were already being scattered over in the other parts of the world where we were already, um, you know, living with the other nations, and the Most High discusses how he's going to um, regraft the natural olive tree where we were just, oh, destroyed and scattered from last. Okay? And we'll get into that more later on in another video because these are coming from some other books and I don't want to get into all these different books right here. I want to be able to show the pictures and kind of read and kind of go into that a little bit more in depth. But from what I'm studying, we're going to be regrafted into this our olive tree Okay, and we're going to be regrafted, and it's going to begin where we were scattered from last. And like I said, the last place where you know the uh, we remember now, the Southern Kingdom was present during the um, Babylonian captivity, Persians and Medes, the um, Greek captivity, Roman activity, uh, Roman captivity, Northern Kingdom wasn't there so that's why they were getting getting put into another land and part of the covenant was if they keep the law section commands of the most high he would keep them separate they would be allowed to grow um and you know and thrive in the new land as long as they follow the ways of the most high as soon as they didn't he was going to bring a nation from a far distance away and that's exactly what happened he talks about, and then that's when he sent the the Europeans from Spain over there to the New World, and it was a brand new world for them because they had never seen it before, never been there before. 
Okay. So, and that's where they went there, destroyed, started moving people from different parts, you know, from South America up to North America. You know, they started moving people from around all these different areas because that's how, that's also how Deuteronomy 2068 occurred. Well, it's not, it's, it's funny when I hear people, well, that means that, you know, Deuteronomy 2068 didn't happen. It does not say that all, all the people came from one landmass and were taken to another. If you get, if you get moved a couple hundred miles away from where you've grown up, that's exactly the same thing. You're in a new land. You're in a strange land. You're in an alien land. You don't recognize where you're at. We were bought, sold. All that happened over here as well, just being moved around in these land masses. And what I'm reading these other books, it shows that the awakening is going to happen here. It's going to begin here. And if you look, the vast majority of the people who are preaching this truth, where are they located? The vast majority of us who are, you know, responsible and being used for this awakening are here in the Americas. Because this is where the Most High said he was going to begin regrafting his people back in. And like I said, this kind of information is not necessarily in the Bible. This information is actually in some other books that I'm going to get into in some future videos. Everything has its place, okay? But the order of our redemption is found in other books. Like I said, I will be getting into that shortly. I don't want to get into all that, but I'm just going to kind of, you know, touch on that a little bit right here. But like I said, I'm going to introduce that concept today about the order of the regrafting in. And that's going to begin here. And as you can tell, it's already begun. Okay? And this is where we were scattered from last. And this will be where the regrafting begins anew. And, uh, you know, the whole world is, is pushing so hard to make us look everywhere else, making us look in the Middle East, making us look in Africa, but keeping us from looking at our homeland here. Okay, constantly telling us this is not our home. And like I made a video a while ago that talked about the um, <clears throat> how the Most High divided up the inheritance. All the lands were already divided up. Shem received the best lands. Now, when people sit there and say, this isn't your homeland, well, then whose is it? Is it Ham's land? That was the, the hot lands? Is that who the Americas was given to? Or was it Japheth who was given the cold lands? That's where the Americas were given to? Or was it given to Shem, the person who inherited the hot and the cold lands, the best lands, the most fertile lands? Who does it make sense? It makes sense that it would be Shem's land. And like I said, I just read that account in the story from uh, the book from Bartolome de las Casas. And it talks about, you know, all the millions of people that have been killed here. And the fact that no one has paid. No one has tried to cleanse the land. And now the Most High has shown all these signs in the sky, pointing to this, to this, this land mass here. North America, South America, Canada, all of that. Okay? Our, our destruction was prophesied all over the scriptures. But also, so is our rise. <clears throat> our rise is also all over the scriptures as well. And I'm going to read a little bit about that fall and that rise that the Most High promised was going to happen. We're going to read from Isaiah chapter 54. And we'll begin at verse 3. For thou shalt break forth on the right hand and on the left, and thy seed shall inherit the Gentiles and make the desolate cities to be inhabited. These cities are desolate because we are not in control of them. But the Most High is going to give us control of our land, our inheritance, our blessing again. And we're going to inherit the Gentiles that are left. Verse 4. Fear not, for thou shalt not be ashamed. Neither be thou confounded, for thou shalt not be put to shame. For thou shalt forget the shame of thy youth, and shalt not remember the reproach of thy widowhood any more. 
the Most High is going to right all the wrongs. For thy maker is thine husband. The Most High of hosts is his name. And thy Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, the Most High of the whole earth, shall he be called. For the Lord hath called thee as a woman, forsaken and grieved in spirit, and a wife of, of youth. When thou uh, wast refused, saith thy God. So we were forsaken for a time. The Most High turned his face from us and allowed these other nations to have their way with us. We broke the laws and the Most High uh, punished us. But now the Most High is about to redeem us and reclaim not only his people, but also his land. The Most High is jealous of the people and how they have misused our land as well as his people. And I'm going to get that shortly in with scripture. Let's continue with seven. This is very important, seven and eight. For a small moment have I forsaken thee, but with great mercies will I gather thee. In a little wrath I hid my face from thee for a moment, but with everlasting kindness will I have mercy on thee, saith the Lord, thy Redeemer. So when I'm reading these stories, these historical accounts of what happened here on these lands, and these other nations coming over here and just treating us like absolute garbage. Break, you know, they were supposed to do, uh, they were supposed to, yes, they were supposed to have us under their thumb, that we were supposed to be under their control, but they took it way too far. And the Most High has been keeping track this entire time. So, like, that's when I read the book of Enoch and how the angels would go up and, you know, make accounts and let the Most High know what was going on. And he would just not, he would not say anything. He would just stay quiet and then allow them to have their time. Now the Most High is giving signs that that time is up. With these, um, you know, all these occurrences happening in, in the heavenlies. Things that cannot be tampered with by man. You know, to mark the seasons that we are in. So I'm going to read that uh, verse 8 again. In a little wrath, I hid my face from thee for a moment. But with everlasting kindness will I have mercy on thee, saith the Lord, thy Redeemer. For this is as the waters of Noah unto me. For as I have sworn that the waters of Noah should no more go over the earth, so have I sworn that I would not be wroth with thee, nor rebuke thee. Okay. For the mountains shall depart, and the hills be removed, but my kindness shall not depart from thee, neither shall the covenant of my peace be removed, saith the Lord that hath mercy on thee. Now remember, part of that covenant was to um, be holy or separate so the other nations would not be able to, um, you know, put us into captivity, kill us, destroy us. He would keep us separate. I think I talked about that on the last video. That was part of the covenant. And that's what the Most High is talking about right here. Neither shall the covenant of my peace be removed. He's going to give us peace again in our land, separate from the other nations. You know, that's what brought the America greatness, was them being separate from the other nations. Remember in World War II, when all the other nations were devastated, the United States was relatively untouched. Why? Because they enjoyed our blessing, and our blessing was to be separate. The oceans, you know, were the best kind of a, a border or barrier from the other nations. And Esau, when he had a control of our blessing, you know, had that blessing as well, which was to say separated from the other nations. So when there's destruction and death happening all over the place, they're relatively unscathed. And that's exactly what the Most High is going to do again for his people. That's why I talked about how they're going to be dwelling in safety. The whole time, I think I want to say Ezekiel 38, 39, from all the Gog, Magog, because they're, they're separated. They're being uh, protected by the angels because they are separated from a distance from the other nations. That's why when you listen to, you look at uh, Revelation 18 and all these nations are far off looking at the destruction. You have to look at the destruction of the people that are on our land that the Most High is going to destroy because they're not supposed to be here. I said, you know, this place... Does it make any sense for us to be over in the Middle East where you're surrounded by your enemies? 
the whole time. The Most High had planned that part of the covenant was to keep us holy, which means to be separate. What land is more separate than this land right here that we're living in now? Okay, let's continue with uh, verse 11. O thou afflicted, tossed with tempest, and not comforted, behold, I will lay thy stones with fair colors, and lay thy foundations with sapphires. Now that's the main thing. Let's look at the start of that. O thou afflicted, tossed with tempest, and not comforted. That's our people. We've been afflicted this entire time, not comforted. Even up to today, we're still being afflicted, and no one comforts us. Okay? No one's paid. No one's, you know, for what's happened to us. We weren't, you know, supposed to be repaid. You know, we're supposed to be afflicted all the way to the end. That's why those people over there don't fit. Because maybe they were afflicted, but they've been repaid. They got a country. They get billions every year. They got a military. They got all this different stuff that they've been getting. Our people have never been paid back for what happened to them and what they've had to endure. But like I said, now you're starting to see as you're looking at this uh, blood moon and where it's covering, what it's covering, the lands of mass is covering, because the Most High is you know, leaving plenty of signs that he's going to repay that he's going to uh, make sure that bill is paid. All right, let's continue with 12. And I will make thy windows of agates, of agates uh, and thy gates of carbuncles, carbuncles, and all thy borders of pleasant stones. And all thy children shall be taught of the Lord, and great shall be the peace of thy children. So our children are going to be in peace. Okay. Let's see. 14. In righteousness shalt thou be established. Thou shalt be far from oppression, far from the people who oppress, oppress us. Okay? For thou shalt not fear, and from terror, for it shall not come near thee, because the Most High is going to separate the people. <clears throat> Behold, they shall surely gather together, but not by me. Whosoever shall uh, together... I shall gather together against thee, shall fall for thy sake. So eventually these other nations are going to band together and come back over here and try to take a spoil. But the Most High will be the judge of these people when that happens. Behold, I have created the smith that bloweth the coals in the fire and that bringeth forth an instrument for his work. And I have created the waster to destroy. No weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper. And every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment, thou shalt condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Most High, and their righteousness is of me, saith the Most High. You know, when you start looking at that number 17, those go back to the blessings of Deuteronomy. And we're going to receive those blessings when the Most High redeems us and redeems our land. Because, like I said, that's a huge part of the blessing that the Most High has promised us. So, like I said, the regrafting is going to begin here on this landmass. Because this is where the vast majority of our people were afflicted and destroyed and no one has paid. And the payment that the Most High has set up to, in order to, you know, to cleanse the land was already set about and Numbers 35 and 33. So all these people that keep saying that he's going to have to destroy the entire landmass, that's not what the Most High was saying. The Most High said he had to shed the blood of the people who shed his people's blood. That's how he's going to clean the land. Okay? The blood moon is marking that. That guy was actually already telling you that, what that was meaning. He was meaning a shift from Esau and the other nations back to Israel. So about this whole, all of these signs are for the regathering of the Most High. And you're starting to see like the Most High is tearing down these other nations. Because once the Most High says your 400 years are up, that's it. There's no reprieve. You don't get extra time. You know, it's not like soccer. Where you get extra time at the end of the game. That's not how it works. When it's done, it's done. That's it. It's over. Okay. Now what I do want to read is Joel chapter 2. Last thing I'm going to read today. Let me 
me get that real quick. Joel chapter 2. We'll start at uh, 18, but I'm going to move around after that. <clears throat> Talking about how the Most High is jealous. Joel 2 and 18. Then will the Most High be jealous for his land and pity his people. The Most High set this land up for us. He set this inheritance up for us. He did not intend for the other nations to have control of it, to make it a desolate land land when they had control of it. This is our blessing and the Most High wants to give it back to his children. Let's take it let's down let's take a look at uh, 2 and 17. Let the priests, the ministers of the Most High, weep between the porch and the altar and let them say, spare thy people, O Lord, and give not thine heritage to reproach that the heathen should rule over them. Wherefore should they, they say among the people, where is their God? And that's exactly what they've done. They've taken our land, taken our knowledge and our understanding, and they mock the Most High. Like, where is your God? Telling us, you know, where's our God? They give us their gods, and we don't know to pray to our own. Okay. Then will the Lord be jealous for his land and pity his people. Yea, the Lord will answer and say unto his people, Behold, I will send you corn and wine, and oil, and ye shall be satisfied therewith, and I will no more make you a reproach, a reproach among the heathen. So that our time of being a reproach among the heathen is just about over. Their time of enjoying our blessing is just about over. And that's why when you look at that, when you really take a good look at that Revelation chapter 18, you see the most, you see all the other nations are all crying and upset because they know their time of getting the blessing of our inheritance, our land, is over at that time. And they know all the riches and everything that they've gotten has come from, you know, them exploiting our land. Okay. Uh, Joel 2 and 20. But I will remove far off from you the northern army and will drive him into a land barren and desolate with his face toward the east sea and his hinder part toward the utmost sea and his stink shall come up, and his ill savor shall come up, because he hath done great things. This land, these barren lands and these desolate lands are their own blessings. They're going to be driven out of here, and are going to have to go back to their own lands. And it discusses that in the scripture, how everyone's going to eventually go back to their own lands. That's what he's talking about, because he's going to kick everyone out of our inheritance, and they're going to be forced to go back to their lands. Okay. Let's go to uh, 21. Fear not, O land, and be glad and rejoice, for the Most High will do great things. He's telling the land because he's going to, he's going to cleanse the land. He's going to move the people who have afflicted his people and his land away from here. And like I told you before, it's going to begin at our inheritance, which is right here. And the Most High is putting all these signs all over the place so that people can see that he's about to move. He's about to uh, renew the land that he has given us, renew the inheritance that he's given us. And these other nations are, you know, they're seeing the signs, but they're not understanding because they don't understand who the people are. And a lot, a lot of our history has been hidden. So a lot of people don't understand the affliction that our people have gone through and the fact that no one has ever paid for it. Because just because you hide the books and hide the information, the Most High has all the information. I was going to make that the last one, but I want to read one more before I end. Let's read Psalms, chapter 50. Let's see. Let's go, let's read uh, 20, actually 19. Psalms 50 and 19. Thou givest thy mouth to evil, and thy tongue frameth deceit. Thou sittest and speakest against thy brother. Thou slanderest thine own mother's son. That was Esau slandering Jacob, taking our inheritance, make, raising himself up to be above all. Let's read 21. These things hast thou done, and I kept silence. 
thou thoughtest that uh, thou thoughtest that I was altogether such as one as thyself. But I will reprove thee and set them in order before thine eyes. So the Most High is going to reprove all the people that have done us wrong. And he's going to set us in order before everyone's eyes. He's going to set us in order here in our inheritance before everyone's eyes. He's going to, um, he's jealous for his land. And he's going to make everything right again. All praises to the Most High, Yahweh. Again, acknowledgement to the earthly mother, who is wisdom, who is the Holy Spirit. Also acknowledgement to Yahweh Shai. I pray that this uh, lesson here gives more knowledge and understanding as to the times that we're living in, and we can put these puzzle pieces back together. Shalom.